Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Saturday Boys, where every day is a Saturday. Come hang out and chat with us as we talk about games, music, movies, all over a nice cold glass of beer. My name is Nick, and today I'm joined by Anthony. Hello. Brandon. What's up? And John. <laughs> it's nice to see you. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Off on a weird note already. <gasps> what are you drinking today, Anthony? What do we got? I have... Uh, that's another 450 uh, beer. As always. The uh, Slushy XL Banana Split. You, know, you wouldn't think of it in the color. So yeah, it's definitely it looks a super, super banana. There's a hint of uh, strawberry and chocolate and vanilla. You've had this one before, right? I have. Actually, I think I like it more than you do. You probably do. Different not- strokes for different folks, you know. Mm-hmm. But Ooh. I have a question. Is that a beer? <laughs> that's a beer. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Hold on. You got to do it. Do the sip. Right. Wait, wait, wait. There it is. That's a beer. Ah, there we go. There, there we are. To the camera. Its finest. <laughs> ah. Boom. So, oh. Nick. Hold on. I've, I've got to do my uh, whole thing <laughs> for that. So, let's get it up here. All right. Honey, have you tried the uh, the Belching Beaver Brewery's Peanut Butter Milk Stout Nitro? It's made in Nicaragua Hills. I don't know. I'm pulling my <laughs> <laughs> What are you looking at? <laughs> Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Gosh. Uh, but no, I'm drinking a peanut butter milk stout. And it is uh, it's peanut butter. It's like heavy it's, peanut butter. Like I smelt a, it and I'm like, oh. Yeah, it took a whiff. This would like, kill Eve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> peanut butter. No, it's, it's not bad. It's, it's, it's average for me just because it's, it's not very carbonated. It, before it barely bubbled. Anthony's like was bubbling like crazy. Damn, I wanted to steal some carbonated. of his carbonation. Yeah, a thick one. Yeah, it's just Stout. it's what's this percent? It's only five percent. Wow, the one we had before oh. was ten. Yeah, yeah. It's surprisingly uh, five. Yeah. It's only five percent, so it's it's not bad. It's average. Three point two five for me. Wow. Yeah. If you drink twice, it'll be ten percent. Exactly, but then yeah. I'll have so many calories. This is a stout, brother. <laughs> triple the volume. All right. That's true. Shotgun it mm-hmm. out of a can bottle. <laughs> It works. It, it just works. It just works. Never shotgunned out of a bottle, but <laughs> <laughs> that's when you're a real man. <laughs> <inside. laughs> that's when you have no fear. Glass? <laughs> nah, I got this. Right. Oh my god. Well, boys, today I am drinking the Heady Cup from 450 North. It is another 450. <laughs> you yeah, they they sponsor us already. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it is a fruited sour, banana, peach, strawberry, marshmallow. And star fruit. And so it's got good. little mushrooms on it, and it's like holographic. I was about to say, does this have? To, it looks like it has texture, but it doesn't. No, I wish it did. It's got it's glitter, glitter though. Mm-hmm. It's nice. It's kind of a thin can, but yeah. you know, it held the beer. <laughs> it, it got it. It served its it, purpose. It, it got the it job. Me. It did the job. <laughs> How do you like it? I love this one. This is actually, I'm yeah. I had two misses the last two yeah, times, and uh, we're coming back with a strong win here. Okay. Heck you. Yeah. Nice. John, what do you got? What do you got? Let's take a peek. All right. What's behind the curtain? It's red. That's all I know. It is red. Hopefully it's as good as your last red one. Okay. From Dublin uh, Craft Soda, we have Texas Red Cream Soda, bottled in Dublin, Texas, made with hurricane sugar. Mm. It's red soda? (laughs) Yeah, red cream soda. Red cream soda. Red cream soda. Okay. Then I did my little, yeah, so we, you did so we get paid. Yep. Yeah. yeah, look right at the camera right, directly. Right, right. No swearing the first 10 minutes, you, boys. No. You know, you oh, get paid shit. for every time you do a product placement, right? That's right. That's actually how we get funded. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's also right. how it worked in the, uh, the Truman Show, but we'll talk about that later. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know what that is. But, uh, I, I don't know. I don't All right, let's get the this Truman set. Show? Oh, that's yeah, a smile. It's, okay. It's, that's just that's, as good as last week, if not better. Last that's week's was the watermelon favorite. one. That one was no, smelled last week's super strawberries good. and cream. Oh, because oh, yeah, you were the one who chugged it. We didn't. We just smelt it. Mm. Yeah, we didn't drink it. it. We just smelt it. Waterfall again. <laughs> waterfall. Red cream. Another successful waterfall, mind you. Yeah. See, that's I'm, good. I think I like the strawberries and cream I'm, I'm better try. <laughs> personally, but that's just me being um, biased towards the flavor of strawberries and cream. Red oh. cream is good. It's just not quite strawberry. Red is just kind of generic red. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't it, really. it tastes like cream soda at the Coke thing. And uh, you just click the strawberry flavor that you add into it. Yeah. It's fantastic. But it is good. I got to say, I like the flavor combo. I do. And it's pure cane sugar. So, you know. It hits. <laughs> it's thick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Gosh. All right. What do we got for news today, boys? Not so important. Who's going news. first? <gasps> um, I will I will Ow. go first with a kind of funny <laughs> one that I got okay. from uh, the New York Times. I mean, it's it's just the title of it is funny. Oh, see, those are sometimes good. I had that Boulder one. That was good. So. Breathing through the rectum saves oxygen-starved mice and pigs. Can you buy me again? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it, my brain didn't uh, capture it at all. Japanese just scientists who studied okay. an unusual method of delivering oxygen in mammals hope to try it one day in people. Mm. Is it weird that I already knew this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so You're it's, ahead of the curve. Science. Yeah. It's oxygen. <laughs> Wait, can you read the, the title? <laughs> yeah, of course. The title the again. Breathing through the rectum saves oxygen-starved mice and pigs. So somehow they, they so, get more out of doing it that way than through their mouth? No, someone is breathing for them. It's like a resuscitation quality because they're low oxygen right now. The deprivation. Oh, so like, oh. Huh. Yeah. Apparently the guy like thought it was a joke. <laughs> right, that's fair. <laughs> okay. Turns out to be a feasible approach, apparently. You can get like air. you hook a respirator up to your butt. Yeah, it works. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Oh well, I guess if oxygen gets to the blood, oxygen gets right. to the like blood. Same idea, like how using but, uh, a suppository, like just yeah. a different way to have the body absorb uh, it. Sir, Vascular. this is pronounced yeah. analgesic, not anal. No, analgesic, not analgesic. The pills go in your mouth. <laughs> I love oh, that line from Shrek. Interesting. <laughs> oh. Interesting. So fish. That means so much more to me because my job to take oxygen from the water is most special. But they can also in. pop their heads above the surface to gulp air. Loaches don't have lungs, so they swallow air through their digestive tract and then absorb it into their intestines. So they're kind of thinking on that level where, like, oh. you can use your other organs to store air almost. Huh. Oh, yeah. No, we got information pulled up here. It says mice and pigs can breathe through their butts. Yeah. Study finds. Soon humans, <laughs> they're trying to get this for us. We're trying to upgrade. What do you think, boys? Would you breathe through your ass if you could? If I can opt out, I'm not doing it. <laughs> okay. I was about to say, I don't think yeah, I... Yeah, but have... it's not like you're tasting the air. Are you? You know that? You, for a fact? You they, could, I don't know. Would, would you? they transfer the taste buds? <laughs> oh. Your asshole has taste buds. Oh, no. I'm pretty sure that's a million dollars butt, though. That's like, oh, you, you that's... get a million dollars butt, you have to taste through your ass. That's like a classic yeah. one. Yeah. Would that contaminate your, your lungs, possibly? Well, it, would it go to your lungs, though? If it just no, gets it into your blood, absorption. it goes into the digestive Well, I guess eventually track. because the... But I don't know. Yeah. You have to breathe it through your lungs at some point. Well, well yeah, because yeah, that's the thing because the filtration happens. Yeah. Do you have size. to breathe it through? If it's going, well, air it's is going oxygen, to your digestive tract, it goes immediately into your blood. It doesn't even touch your lungs until it goes around Well, it's again, eventually going to get through there. Through the heart. It'll get there, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you won't be able to taste it. Actually, too much air in your blood can actually kill you because you can get a pocket or a bubble. So you're saying a third hole to breathe through might actually get you a little... Might be lethal to breathe through well, your ass. <laughs> well, maybe... maybe you're going to have to turn one off. So maybe, you got to, like, yes. choose, like, your nose, your nose, open up, up your asshole. Yeah. But see, then you're, like, food's going to be, like, not it's, as enjoyable. It's great for doing handstands in the pool. Listen, that's amazing I, thought, but you know, I'd rather be able to still smell. I feel like this is nose. how you end up with a shit burger in your lungs. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, I can't. I 300 Not pound shit burger removed from British man's lungs. <laughs> oh, no. uh, Cut it out, what Kate. I was saying <laughs> is a lot of the pockets from air is from diving. So maybe if they instead of like have oxygen tubes in the mouth, they have it attached to your butt for diving and you'll get oxygen that way. I wonder if it or you have to process it like a little bit of time, you know, this is way more butt talk than I wanted on this. This is how we're starting. Brandon set what? the tone. <laughs> Because the, the amount that I wanted was zero. I think we're, we're past above the 10-minute mark, and I think we did our product placement. Mm -hmm. So I think we can get mm. the... We can talk about it. booty now. Yeah, we can talk about booty. <laughs> we can just or, cut and make this the last no, no, but, story. No. What, or, what if we take this a step further? Instead of diving, what if astronauts get their oxygen through their butthole? That's why they're called astronauts. <laughs> oh, my God. We've done it. <laughs> No, nope. Elon Musk, get them them. on the phone okay, okay. now. <laughs> While you're on that, let me go to my news real quick. Yes, just please. That. Yes. Anything Hold to on. change the subject. <laughs> I swear <laughs> if it's about something about the... So what did you just say, Brandon? Elon Musk, get him on the phone now. We have an idea. Here's my news. Elon Musk's name appears in a 69-year-old book about colonizing Mars. Really? Yep. Fake news. Prophecy. 
Someone oh, used right. him, his name, as a fake name when writing like a cheap sci-fi novel from 70 years ago. That's funny. Like yeah. character for character, like yeah. letter for letter. Yeah. That's... Really? What? A prophecy. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. It's kind of weird. It's kind of <laughs> weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's um some guy named Von Braun's 1953 book Mars Project referenced a person named Elon that would bring humans to Mars. Wow. Yeah. But not necessarily his full name, Elon Musk. And not just necessarily just by breathing through your ass. Okay. So well, I guess how common is the name Elon? Some slight guess, changes. In, in reality, like I how think, common is that name? Hear me out. I think you could get people even further through space. Like if you have that extra, you know, like you could get them further. They're storing it in their asshole. You could push them further through space. I had one request. Hmm. I don't know what I started. I'm sorry. Less butt talk. Okay. Okay. I promise. We are Elon name popularity. It turns out the name Elon is in 13th when it comes to how much it's ranked decreasing. So it's dropped a lot mm. in like 178. So can okay, I read my dirty news? Just one last question though. Like yeah. what if you fart? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So is a fart considered a cough? <laughs> it is, it is, now. is it a burp? <laughs> or is it a burp? And then do you inhale it? Uh, do you, do you exhale your farts through your... <laughs> Your breathing too. <laughs> so Anthony, I hear you have some news for us I today. Do. It has nothing to do with people's butts. <laughs> cool. Let's uh, let's hear it. So a uh, woman says that she had a twenty six million dollar lottery ticket in California, Bro. and that it got destroyed that, in the wash. That was my literally. That Seriously? was the one I was about to say. And that's also why I had a second one because I thought that would happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, but this girl lost a twenty six million dollar in the yeah, in the wash. She, she says she did though. Yeah, she there's, claims. Yeah, yeah, there's no actual. Well, but there's but no also news. at the uh, where she purchased a ticket because they got the the security footage mm-hmm. and that the because the people that worked there also claim that they knew her, so they're like, yeah, like like someone like vouched that she did buy a lottery ticket, and they used the footage to do that. And then there's like a, supposedly there's this whole process just to go through to prove it. But the only thing is, since she doesn't have like a picture or anything, there's really nothing to tie it. So even though they have the security footage, that's not quite enough information from what I read to actually have her claim the money. So realistically, it's just going to go like this. That's just the money that's going to be that would have been one is going to go to like uh, the school system. That's yeah, yeah, that's what I read as well. Did you read the part about um, how back in the day they ran a forensic um, test on a pair of jeans because somebody else did the same thing? Oh, no. Yeah, they ran a test on it and um Actually, on like the ticket in the jeans or whatever, and then it, it failed. The ticket fell apart, and they weren't able to, to ever mm. figure out who got the money. But Jeez. yeah, yeah, someone uh totally done goofed. They got fucked. Yeah, that's right. why like realistically, like you should just just take a picture. Well, of it well yeah. The time. question is like, once you see you have a winning lottery ticket, that becomes like gold. Why would you keep that in your jeans? Yeah, of all places yeah. that goes into a wallet. And then, like, you, a purse, didn't, you didn't a think locker. to take it out and then like before you're gonna wash it. Like that was twenty six million dollars. That's well, I guess well, that's the thing too because I don't think about I feel like it doesn't specify like when. So she not. probably found out about it after it got washed. Like she probably found it. Well, one. how would you know it's how, winning? How do you memorize your lottery numbers? Water numbers? If she didn't take a picture of it, that's, that's true. Not bullshit. Yeah, no. Right. Through yeah. my yeah. asshole nose. God damn it. Okay, I swear my news article won't come back to assholes, hopefully. I'll bring it there. Because mine's just uh, shitting on myself. So, (laughs) well, it's a news article saying that uh, basically, (laughs) what are you pulling up YouTube for? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not laughing at that, we're laughing at you. (laughs) What? I'm just 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 shitting on myself, but I'm not going to talk about assholes. (laughs) <laughs> Mick, 2021. You can quote me. Let's go. All right. Uh, what a hash. So it's uh, the Sony PS5 console redesign is uh, expected to launch probably next year. And guess who bought a PS5 in this room? This guy. Yeah. This guy. So uh, basically, you know, PS5s are in super small demand. Well, super high demand, mm. small supply. Yeah. And I managed to pick one up, even though you guys were saying, no, 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 no. Wait till the redesign. And uh, now they're talking about redesign. Oh. What are you pulling up on YouTube? Don't worry about it. Just keep talking. Good. Uh, all right. Expedia. Talk about that in a second, I guess. But um, you guys were all making fun of me for picking up a PS. What are you? What the? F- oh. It's Ace Ventura. <laughs> all right. I've been defeated. Remember the thing you said like two minutes ago? That's like, there's no way it's going <laughs> to. Shane found a way. 
<laughs> if there is a will. Basically, is a they're planning on redesigning it to make mm -hmm. it use less silicon and fix the battery issue that the oh, yeah. PS4 and PS5 have. Mm -hmm. Basically, there's an issue to where like, if the PS5 battery runs out and it doesn't connect to the internet, it basically kind of like bricks the console. Like you oh, can't go really? online, you can't do anything. Wow. So it's just huh. a design fly. It will, it, so they're probably going to future proof that in the next update. Mm. So that's good. Yeah, it's just it's like, well, you guys were right. I am enjoying my PS5, but there's probably a redesign already next year. So it's just it's happening Gone. earlier just because of the cement. If they can cut two millimeters of silicon off of the chip, it'll make it so much easier to produce them. So, I'm sure, yeah. Yep. And it's talking about, I think it's a seven nanometer or something like that. And it's going down to like a five is what it's projected to be. So it's a better CPU, mm. cheaper to make. Heck yeah. Hopefully one day we'll all be able to play. Well, all the great PS5 games are usually single player. Sony has a really good like single player experience mm -hmm. for it. So it's just like. I want Ratchet and Clank so bad. Mm hmm. I want to play it. And Demon's Souls. I got Demon's Souls, obviously. Is, did Miles Morales come out on PS4 too? I no, picked it up on PS5. I so. PS5 only. PS5 that. only? Yeah, the first Spider Man game was PS4, which was mm -hmm. awesome, okay. but I haven't got the chance to play my own resume. I have it. You can come on yeah. over and hang out. The good thing is, by the time we cats. get the console, okay, branding, I can bring it over. We'll have cats. so many games to choose from oh, yeah. that we won't have to even worry. Well, also, that new Souls like game, the one where you uh, die over and over again, Revergent or whatever it is, Resurgent or. Oh, well, Returnal. Returnal. Which I, I saw that was freaking for PS5 only. I almost like threw my yeah. freaking desk. I'm like, damn it. It's a Souls-like, roguelike. So I have to wait for like for the PS5 other one that's only. coming out, but I don't think it actually has an actual definitive date. So I'm like, well, I'm just going to stick with piece. DS3 through 1 that's, or 1 through 3. Hey, you could pick up Demon Souls. Oh, wait. All right. <laughs> Why? What are we talking about today? I think we're about yes. to move on to our main topic today. Uh <laughs> But he's breathing. He has too thing. much power. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Kristoff. <laughs> oh. He is like Kristoff. Oh. Gosh. Transition. Uh, so today we are talking about the glorious 1999 movie, The Truman Show. One of my Woo. personal favorites. I love this movie, man. Definitely favorite Jim Carrey movie, even Ooh. though it's totally out of character for him being a drama mm -hmm. film. Mm hmm. He has his Jim Carreyness only comes through in a couple scenes. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, oh, there he is. Yeah, <laughs> but really he's a good drama it. actor because I think this is one of his first big drama. Yeah, things. What year was Man on the Moon? Ooh, was that nine? That was in the nineties, or was I don't gosh? Know. I believe that was, that was in the nineties too. But yeah, this was one of the first dramatic roles. Oh, Man on the Moon was ninety nine too. Oh, no, so was yeah. after. Right, which one came out first? Let's find this was ninety eight. Well, they're oh, Truman was ninety eight. Truman was ninety eight. Oh, I yeah. thought it was ninety nine. Okay, so yeah. Truman came first. Never mind, I lied. Anyway, uh, Man on the Moon came out December 22nd, 1999, so <laughs> the end of the year. Yeah. But now we're uh, talking about the Truman Show today. I mean, tons of good stuff to say about this movie. For one, the soundtrack, killer. Yeah, I um, love it. Yeah. For me, it's the set design. I love the whole like Oceanside aesthetic and everything. It's just a beautiful city in Florida, right? Yeah, so I was going to mm. say, on that, did you yeah. guys know that it was a real town in Seaside, Florida? That they It, it is Seaside, Florida. They went and shot there because just the vibe was what they they wanted. <laughs> it was like it's literally they rented out like the whole chunk of a town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did they do the entire town? Because when you see the... Uh, the set as it pulls out and he has the cool little diorama which I mm. love diorama so yeah. that scene I'm just like ah. <laughs> but um, I'm not sure if it was the full town or uh, just chunks of it but I know that they only had to build onto one of the buildings Dude, that's a small town said. yeah it's a very mm. small town wow that's it's, cool it's like a little community sort of dealio so speaking of or towns Haven, or cities what it is in the film or localities or municipalities yeah they mentioned that he is the only person to be adopted by a corporation. Dude, yeah. So his last name, which if you notice is Burbank, Burbank is the production and entertainment capital of the world, home to most of the corporations that make media. So his mm. last name, his family name is literally the production. The, yeah, the, the area. city of Burbank. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And also his first name has relevance too. He's the only true man. Ooh. It's actually probably a little more to it than that. but I like that though. Yeah. And then also Kristoff. Christ off, yeah. Yeah. or of Christ, yeah. Well, I guess it's not. Really All right, Zack Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of there's like a lot of symbolism that like I was like seeing that like 
I feel like some of it's like a stretch, but like one I thought was really interesting was at the end scene with uh, the boat being capsized and then he finally like survives. It's just to like simulate because the way he's hanging over it's supposed to be kind of like the crucifixion, but yeah. then also like the Fine rebirth of him. Exactly. Like, <laughs> the way like he like he like being bat or like also like you can infer it like being his baptism because like how he got and then reborn. So it's Definitely. there's Definitely a lot of like. Before religious symbolism in that Dang. like one little chunk of the end of the movie like the, the last 10 minutes has so much going somebody on somebody watched unreal. a wisecrack episode i did oh, oh, actually, actually okay yeah. i was assuming that sounds super it's actually not from so. wisecrack oh, okay. surprisingly it was one it's like very philosophical yeah. right so. yeah like i was surprised it wasn't from them to be honest the one i watched from wisecrack was the the alien one where you had like the really big eye like oh. i haven't seen any of those yet so yeah, i was like really i'm like what's the, going on uh, alien movie reviews i forgot i forget their names yeah. have you watched any of those that they did uh -uh. oh it's it's basically it's like if a, <coughs> if a person from another planet watched a movie so it's like uh oh. supposed to be like a culture shock type thing it's a oh, cool yeah. like, show it's a pretty cool show that's cool it yeah. works really well yeah. and it like it helped with the the research for this so thanks wise guy <laughs> <laughs> but yeah uh, my, I don't really remember my first time watching the show. I've wa probably watched it for a, a long, like since I was young, because I remember it like a lot. Yeah, I've watched, watched it many young. times. Me too. Gosh, yeah. You guys, John, just recently, or have you watched it a lot? Dozens of times. First time I probably watched it was maybe eleven years ago with Brandon. Okay, so yeah, you know, it's a good one. First time I watched it was because of you, because I actually hadn't watched it before. Because I've watched so many of his I'm movies, and that, that one just like. <laughs> Just completely like overlooked it. it it's a very like it? not Jim Carrey film, but it is right. very good. Did you That's like it? it? The first time I walked, I watched it. I'm like, yeah, it's good. Second time I watched it, which was this week, really liked it. Third time I watched it, it was also this week, two days later. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, it's I'm surprised you'd only seen it the one other time. Yeah, dang. I figured you'd seen it times before, but I found out something interesting, not about the movie, but about Nick. He's never seen Pineapple Express. Really? Yeah, I, I just never watched it. What kind of store do you guys work at? Uh, <laughs> a store. <laughs> but um, no. Pharmaceuticals. I've, I've, I've never seen it. So. Recreational now. But <laughs> right. Greeneries. So. Festive herbs. They work in agriculture. And spice yeah. cultures. <laughs> I sell gelato, all right? But, <laughs> I work um, at a Baskin Robbins. I sell gelato. I sell wedding cake, sure cherry pies. 31 flavors. <laughs> at least. Mint chocolate chip. <laughs> Way more than that. <laughs> 31 times whatever your brain can possibly imagine. But yeah, I've, I've just never seen but Pineapple yeah. Express. I, it's just, I haven't, I wasn't as huge into James Franco and Seth Rogen that you guys were. So a couple of those ones, like I fell off the wagon and just missed them. That's Man. fair. I didn't watch it until like a couple of years ago. Mm. For sure. Yeah. But but on yeah. to Truman Show yes, again. Yes, 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 Gosh. <laughs> Drink. I just found that out today. So I was just like, I had oh, to bring probably, it up. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's. Do you want to do a, a, a side a go through of the movie, a quick little summary? We'll do or a very, do wanna, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, tiny, yeah. tiny, yeah. tiny, yeah. Basically, guy in a fake world. Well, we can do a little more. That, that's it. Well, I didn't right. know you were gonna. Yeah, it's basically a, a guy has a, a movie set up for him, a TV show. It's on twenty four seven, and it's his life in a manufactured town in the middle of LA. Which climate? How, how do you make a? Uh, because it's in, like, obviously when it zooms out and you see the whole dome of the set, that's L.A. So it's just like... Specifically, it's Burbank. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, shit. No, it, it is, is exactly on that side of the hill. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But no, yeah, it's... How do they get it to be, like, you know, Florida, the East Coast, inside of a dome in... That's got to take so much electricity to get that climate mm -hmm. controlled. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was... It's like Hunter, it, not Hunger Games mm -hmm. type stuff. We're messing yeah. with the climate and everything. It's like, well, they, the um, technology... Right. The director actually goes into specifics on how they would have actually got, he like figured out how it would have actually happened, like how they would have gotten the funding and how they would have done it legally. And well, I can see it just not in LA. Like if they're wanting to make a seaside a big, town, I would see them put it like in, on an Island in Florida in the yeah, Keys or some, something like that. Somewhere with more space. Yeah. I get that. Mm -hmm. Cause in LA that's hot a lot of the year. <laughs> so yeah. that'd be hard to make that type of climate. And especially with the whole seaside town and everything. Yeah. But no, it's a, a guy named Truman Burbank in his own TV show since birth. And he's got millions of people watching him every single day. And basically the movie follows him slowly coming to the realization that he is at the TV show and like how he comes to grips with that. And it's it's a super intriguing film on just like the 
philosophy around everything, especially with the whole ending that you brought up with the third act about him being reborn from basically a movie character to escaping like the matrix. And it's so mm-hmm. interesting. It's actually been diagnosed as a form of schizophrenia. They've mm-hmm. linked to the Truman show. Really? It was coined mm-hmm. based off of coined based off the movie. It's basically, there's a, like a subset of schizophrenics who believe that they are constantly being watched. That they're on a TV show that mm-hmm. they, it's basically the Truman that they believe that. And it's they've coined it the Truman uh, Truman syndrome or something like that. Right. That's really I mean, interesting because yeah. they kind of created their own. It was just like yeah. a good name for a disease that's probably been around for a bit. It's mm-hmm. just like, well, this movie's got out. Everybody knows this. We'll name it this. Yeah, I think it was coined in 2008. Yeah. So not oh, wow. too long ago. Yeah. And then yeah. I think it was the director even commented on it saying that, like, you know, you've made it when they name a disease <laughs> <laughs> or like, like yeah. something like that after you. And I'm like, that's hilarious. Like that director. He's the man. <laughs> Speaking of which, I actually don't know the director off the top of my Peter head. Weir. Weir. Peter Weir. Christoph. Chris, Christoph. Christoph is the director Christoph. of the Truman You know how he got that job? He oh. shot documentaries of uh, homeless people is the like backstory for Christoph. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, not Peter Weir, but. No, I was going <laughs> to say. Like, huh? Yeah. Interesting. Also, it wasn't originally supposed to be. Oh, Burn wow. Room. Somebody's going so fast. So fucking cool. um, the guy that, that what, was Ed Harris. What, what's the name? Is it he did Ed Harris? Poet Society. Yeah, yeah, Ed Harris. Uh, he, he wasn't the original person to play that role. No, it was. Oh, of course, I just forgot it immediately. <laughs> I forgot who it was, but they recast Dennis it so Ho- late. something Hopper. Yeah, I think Dennis yeah, Hopper. I think, I think it was Dennis Hopper. And the funny enough, uh, Ed Harris and Jim Carrey never. Like they didn't meet until after the movie was done. I, I pointed that out. They don't talk mm-hmm. physically talk to each other yeah. until the yeah. very end of the movie. So funny, my notes. So funny enough, like when you when he does that scene at the end when he's talking to him, he like like there was like one of the videos I watched was like saying about like so did he do that scene? Or was he like the idea that he was talking to Den- like Hopper? Like the idea like did he think that's who it was gonna be? Or like I guess that's not really really relevant, but it's interesting to think like he was thinking. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the idea Dennis that he Hopper. was okay. talking to someone else and then it ended up being a different person. And then the way the scene was filmed, that it was just done after the fact. Mm. So just in, like, just like a little tidbit, just the idea that he thought he was talking to one person and ended up being another. They hired yeah. Ed Harris before they even worked out a contract with him. They put him in the suit and put him on the set before they even really? negotiated. Really? Huh. Yeah. Well, cause he met him and they went over the talks and there was like, yeah, you're my guy. Get, let's do it. Yeah, Jim Carrey was like the, one of the, if not the first uh, one considered for the role too. For, it's actually uh, how Truman. we ended up on this podcast in a very similar way. We uh, this is a simulated podcast. Just to, yeah. don't don't do this to me. Okay, I'm not ready for it. <laughs> Where's we'll the cameras? Oh wait, yeah. <laughs> you guys will start to see it as we go along the episode. You'll start to realize will a that. light fall from the ceiling. I think we've had a light fall before. What, serious we nothing major? Up, not, just yeah. please no. This uh, it looked like it was a big mess. I don't I don't want it. Which one used the real one though? None of us. Oh. Shame. Okay. So, <laughs> dude, that that whole <clears throat> scene with him talking to his best friend. Oh, dude, yeah. that hurts. That hurt. every time I always forget, oh. and it just hurts. Wait, which one? The which one, one at the end where he's like, "I have to be in on it too," and he's oh, saying yeah. all those words, and then it zooms out, and you see that they reintroduce the father. He's talking yeah. to him, telling him the words. You're just yeah, like, that "Oh, one, that one stings. That hurts so, so bad." My, the way, it, so I don't know how you guys interpret it, but I think. In my mind, I think the reason why that hurt Truman even more, like because of what's going on, is because I think he he doesn't believe that he's real. That he, I think at that point he's very convinced that this is all fake. So like the idea that someone he trusts so much is just blatantly lying to him. Well, like I feel like that was also the truth. Think about the actor; he wasn't lying. The actor has been playing with him since they were like seven or eight. He probably was a child actor who grew up with Truman the entire yeah. time, and right. now he's good friends with Truman. He's probably better than the wife who got cast and thrown on that. He's probably hit Truman's closest friend and he's basically being forced to lie to his friend. And you can mm-hmm. see like the, like he's, he's just like, choked up a little bit. He's like, like he's... I'm lying to you, but I can't. And it's, he knows it and he wants to keep going with it. Yeah. And right. everything. I would argue a counter that he is not empathetical about it. Oh, because really? I would think that he's very, actually manipulative against it because if you look at the scene shortly afterwards where they're communicating and trying to find him he's looking at the camera he's acting like it's like a frustration like yeah, he has no pretty adamant well then he's just like well him. you gotta they didn't find him like, but then also no I'm just a hopeless romantic <laughs> I like it though well, even, <laughs> in the, right, even in the beginning 
because he's even part because they do like the whole interview thing. It's like nothing's fake. It's like that. It's just it's just merely controlled. So like he he's in like he's probably like the one of the most committed people on the set. No. If you think about it, because that and because knowing him for so long. So he's been there almost like I mean, he's only he got there seven years after. So he's probably one of the oldest cast members of the whole thing. He is. And they talk about I watched an interview with the guy that played him and he did mention what we're talking about right now and building that like into the character. Mm-hmm. Um, he was basically like, yeah, no, this was an actor that was with him since they were like seven and they're childhood friends. So it's like. He's, he is, fairly he real. does have some sort of like tear, but like Jonathan was saying, it's like, man, it is I, his job. It is his, yeah. yeah, it is like, his job. And he kind of didn't really give a shit once they told him to go on a manhunt. He I, did I, I want to point out, out there after. Him, yeah. But. I want to point out uh, something about, you know, these are all actors. So they, his close friends and stuff, they have to have probably excuses or something mm-hmm. to have them do time to not spend in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. they were talking at, about that, let me look up. There was a new... Okay. Oh, when he had pneumonia. No, the my favorite uh, catchphrase or new phrase for a vacation <laughs> is when you go out hauling chickens for the summer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to... Like, we have a catchphrase called licking the Werthers, which is going to the bathroom. <laughs> yep. We'll talk about that eventually. But uh, I'm going to say, well, we're going to go haul chickens a couple weeks. Uh, I need a vacation. The K- uh, Kaiser chickens? I don't know. It was just hauling chickens is what I wrote. I brought a plumbing. Do you guys hear it? The wife got a pay bump every time that she slept with him. Wait, what? Yeah. What? Yeah, that's amazing. Did they bump. mention that during the movie? In the, I watched that whole special feature. Okay, thing, I was about to say, I think that's one of the deleted scenes that actually has him in bed together. Yeah. Like, I think, like, and waking up the morning that's after. That's one of my favorite parts, though, is when it cuts to the guys and they're in, like, the parking lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's like... You never, show never, show Scully? Scully? never show anything. You mean Scully from yeah. Brooklyn Nine Nine? Oh, yeah. you said it. I was gonna say. Yeah. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. Uh, I literally paused the movie like the second uh, playthrough because I, I never because obviously back then it wasn't a, a thing when I first watched it. That's how long ago it was. But like, and I saw him. I'm like, I pause it. IMDb. I'm like motherfucker. I knew that was Scully. Looking <laughs> <laughs> at that face anyway. <laughs> and that haircut. Right? Like, so he's just like literally the same that character. Wisconsin haircut. So what would your excuse be to get out of the show if you were an actor? Oh, oh if you had to take a, a couple weeks off. Yeah. Gosh. I'd probably, knowing me, not be super creative and just say I'd go camping out somewhere for a couple weeks. Camping. But uh, hauling of- chickens is just so much. It's like it's a job too. So it's like you can come back with stories. I'd probably just end up saying going camping uh, or going up thing. to the lake, Lake Powell. Mine would just be like, oh, I just, I just really need to get away and just like, then just make up a place well, that I'm going to go. Where would you make up though? Yeah, let's uh, say I'm so Truman. You have to give me an excuse Anywhere now. besides Fiji. Fiji was going to be what I was just Because Fiji, then, because yeah. then I just hurt Truman more and I just exactly. couldn't do that. But you would. <laughs> Fiji. I don't know. I'm not going to hurt him. Hurt you. No, I'm not hurt. It's weird that that obsession was probably based upon that actor who played the father. It's just random ass place he picked. We're going yeah. to Fiji. Yeah. I thought about that too. I had yeah, a just, note about that, that it's like the first thing to come out of his head ends up being another man's obsession. Yeah. yeah. Right. He just, they don't really know up. what they're doing to yeah, Truman. Exactly. How psycho. Like, right. even Katie kind of pointed it out the whole first scene where he's ripping out eyes, like, <laughs> and he pulls it out. Mm-hmm. That's a little creepy. Right. Oh, yeah. I just I love how they do you have the context have for no that? Yes. Yeah, so you're yeah. just like, what? Yeah, Truman is a little, uh, he's got a couple weird things that he does, but it's definitely caused from the trauma that yeah. they've put on him, man. Like, I have no... It's essentially uh, no, like, a documentary on gaslighting, almost. Pretty much. And then, so the whole movie is them trying to make him afraid of traveling out. It's so And so, like, up. you see when, okay, so I guess starting first one, when the light falls, and then he gets in the car, and then they're like... Oh, yeah, that was from a jet, and the parts are falling off, and yep. you don't want to fly, and it's right. safe on the ground. And then when he he's trying to fly away, and then the, it shows the... Uh, in, oh, the plane it, with the yeah, lightning the plane through the, the wings. Like, like yeah. this happened Which, to you. Way, I did want to mention, is not a bad thing. Planes are actually meant to dissipate. Oh, yeah, they can, they oh, yeah. can be struck by like, Yeah, because they can't discharge anywhere because it's not touching the ground. Exactly. It causes literally nothing. Right. Just oh, like, yeah. okay. It's one yeah. of those things where it's it'll, it's only scary because you don't understand how everything Well, all it that seems works. like that'd be like a Twilight Zone episode. Like you're taking right. a flight, oh. you get struck by lightning, and you land somewhere else in a different Fiji. time. You land in right. Fiji in like the BC era. I made it. I had no... Speaking of Twilight Zone, I had... Seems like... This whole movie just seems like an episode of either the Twilight Zone or Black Mirror. Yeah. Speaking of that, that's one of the things that the director... 
was uh, questioned if because there's an episode, there's one of the episodes of Twilight Zone it's a similar idea. So like people thought that it was inspired by that, but he claims that there was no that the Truman Show like the idea for it was completely original. It wasn't influenced by anything else. Well, just the Twilight Zone basically like introduced the idea that like things aren't what they seem, and like these cool scientific thought experiments is basically what all Twilight Zone episodes are. And this is just a thought experiment. Like, what if you were to create a TV show around one person? And they do like break physics and stuff. Like, how do they? create many storms and do all this stuff without like anyone noticing. So well, yeah, it's, it's this crazy cool. elaborate thing, especially like in a, if you think of the time period too, like, like both it's came out in 98, but then it's the idea that it's an earlier period, even more so. Okay. Well, so yeah, like, he's at least, does, do they ever mention his age? It's like, how no, many dice was it? <gasps> Oh. I know this. Oh, 7, so nine hundred nine, which is twenty nine point eight eight, I think. So he's almost 30. thirty years old. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And only so, like, not many days <laughs> pass actually in the movie. Fifteen? What? Oh the no, the same nice. Truman Show is fine for kids fifteen. <clears throat> oh. I would argue differently. Oh, also, <laughs> actually, speaking of uh, age fifteen, originally the movie wasn't meant for him to be like the midlife or like the mid- or like older adult going through a crisis. Yeah. He was it was supposed to be a teenager or like just out of. High school. Well, the sh- the Truman Show was only supposed to be a one year thing at first, and his name was going to be Malcolm. I think it was. It was like uh, the like original design. It was like a lot different than what we actually got, which is I think I don't think it would have worked as well. I think the way what we got, I think, is the way it needed to be. Yeah, there's a the original idea was nothing like what it, what we really got. <laughs> yeah. Okay, weird. Well, yeah, because I uh, like what we got though. Right. So you know, I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> well, you're talking about. The uh, the actual movie, the Truman Show. Yeah. I was talking about the Truman Show, but I I do know what you're talking yeah, about. Where the script like was different. The it was more show. sci-fi. Like, yeah. yeah, but what I'm talking about was um, just that the actual Truman Show was only supposed to be. It was the, like was it supposed first, to be just the first year of his life? It was only supposed oh. to be the first year, and then they it saw how did it, or how well it did. So then they built on a little bit. And then they added a dad character, and then they built That's on a little bit. That's why there's that scene where he's on the beach and he's climbing the rocks, and his dad says, "Hey, you got to oh, get away." Because they're, con- they're doing the construction. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, doing the construction. I didn't. On the other side I saw. Of the beach. Oh, in the original cut, cut they together. didn't show that. Really? Really? In the original cut that's, of the. That's what I watch. Well, I actually have a different DVD than you, so I might have yeah. a like theatrical cut or something like that. That is a theatrical cut. Well, I don't remember them showing the construction scene after. No, well, you beach. don't see the construction. You don't see the construction. It, it's on it, the beach. He's on oh, the beach, yeah. and he goes to kind of yeah. like no, and he stops, and he's like, "Why? What's up there?" Is like, uh, then he tries to make an excuse, and like the entire it's, like, it's of dangerous. The beach. Is yeah. all he says, and you can oh. kind of hear like construction noises. Yeah, because yeah. you just you just it's just in, inferred because it doesn't even pan over for us to see. Like it's just no, it's okay. all inferred, it's and like then the, the whole the beach they're just watching it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I thought you were talking about some other scene where you actually see them building no, the city. Yeah. Okay. Well, you do see the scene through the uh, elevator. Yeah, because you see them yeah. kind of sitting there like as if they're like on set or like yeah. an actual set. <laughs> they are and then, set. yeah. But then, then everybody to one. <laughs> it's such a weird scene. Right. And then them all frozen. Great. <laughs> kind of a weird fan theory I read or something on a video is um, the reason they play only classical music on the classical drive mm. with classical Clive, which I love. I just <laughs> love that. <laughs> But the reason I only play that, someone had a theory that it's because it's in the public domain. Yeah. Yep. Classical music. Mm-hmm. They can broadcast it yep. and not don't worry about licensing or anything yeah. like that. They can put it on their greatest hits DVDs yep. or VHSs. Just because, like, <laughs> the idea, too, because, like, they have limited ways to make money. So they want ways to help. They have to pay extra money for that, for licensing, because they get all their money through the product ab- placement. Yeah, product placement. Because it's always going. There's no commercials. Mm-hmm. So they can't do it any other way. That has to be in real time. So one thing. So. You know how flashbacks are actually integrated into the Truman Show? Like, if mm-hmm. you were to be watching the Truman Show as a show, you would see, like, it would H- flash him in back the corner to- getting ready for work while they're showing flashbacks. Like Lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of. So, uh, I was just thinking, so that show is live. Mm-hmm. So, they have to, like, as it's happening, they're like, oh, okay, we got to queue up memory or yep. day number. I was like, how hard of a job would that have to fucking right. be? Paul Giamatti makes it look so boring. I know, right. but like you have like he has like one other person with him, and occasionally they have like a a, a group. I'm in training there. the new guy, but it's like yeah, I can't even imagine the amount of like you'd have to know like every time he takes a shit, you'd have to cut. Yeah, <laughs> right. There's so many th- things they can't show because the, That's the idea such they're a trying to make weird idea. Because what if his memory that he's actually having isn't what they portray? So what if they get it wrong? What they're predicting. He's is thinking about to, like exactly yeah, have yeah. these actions. I guess also that doesn't matter because the idea, since they're controlling it, they, they're only going to show whatever they want the people to see. So to, 
I guess yeah. as long as it somewhat matches up with what the scene was prior, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. Interesting. As long as it, like it's actually him, I guess. Actually We're basically talking happening. about the scene where he grabs the sweater and they cut back yeah. to that. It's like, oh, you don't remember her? Yeah. Or something. Always the idea yeah. they can get rid of yeah. her, but not the memory. Yeah. So like that's the thing is they're very aware. Like there's certain things they don't want to have happened, but ultimately he's it's part of him. And since they can't manipulate him in any way because he needs to be ignorant to the whole process, they still allow certain things happen that weren't supposed to. That's old nutshell of it that I love is that it's just like they can't take away the. He's still a human. Exactly. So there's certain things that like because they can't account for every any possible thing because they're also human. So like there's not like they have like a system that's programmed to think about all these possibilities. They're just reacting to what's happening in real time. And as controlled as he wanted to make it, he was never able to fully have control because his Mm -hmm. focus, his obsession in life was someone that was independent. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's why they had to go to the extremes to with, with uh, restrain him. Hence the whole childhood trauma, like yep. because they, they came to the idea that like eventually he's going to want to leave because they can see how he is in school and he wants to be an adventurer. So they have to fabricate some type of idea to keep him there, so which is they just wrecked his morbid as all hell. So it's speaking like, of being an adventurer <laughs> and an explorer, like he says, did you catch the name of his sailboat that he leaves on? Oh, the yes, Santa, Santa Maria. Maria. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The second watch Same through this awesome. week, I saw that because I saw San, like because I, I don't know why I just didn't rewind it because I have the power to do that. That went by <laughs> and I was like, I don't know, I know why because I knew I was gonna watch it again. But like I saw that and then when I had the second watch through, I'm like, I see what you did there, movie. <laughs> <laughs> Random side thought: I was doing some research. Um, the actress who plays Sylvia, uh, mm-hmm. I'm like, I recognize her from something. Yes. I did too. Trying yes. to look through, I actually really don't. Found right. Dick and Jane, I thought. Yeah. I, d- I didn't really her? see anything that I recognize her in until I got to the 2021. She's playing uh, Dr. Catherine Halsey in the Halo uh, live action huh. TV really? series film. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I didn't. Just random fact. I don't recognize anything else. But right. She seems so. Yeah, she she seems, seems very so familiar. familiar. Yeah. yeah. She'd be like a perfect extra or something. I just knew all of this <laughs> stuff her whole entire. Oh. Lady Capulet and Romeo and Juliet didn't watch that. And that's, eh. So speaking of people who were like on the Truman Show, if like you're one of the main characters on the Truman Show mm-hmm. and you're living on set and you have to be there like every single day, say you're like his wife or the best friend or whatever, and you're making good money from that, obviously. Like you're doing all these product placements. Dude, think like, about this the is power abuse. you have, the NDAs and everything. Yeah. And like, like and right. But what show. are they're just sitting with that? Mu- like, what are they spending that on? That's a really good point. What's the incentive? Yeah, like you're you're living in the Truman world. Don't wonder if they almost lied to him. The idea, like, how long it's going to go for to keep? Oh well, no, maybe because I they guess could it, just kill the character off or divorce or whatever. I, like that's what they. I can guess that's do what they that, think. The idea, like, like, I'm going to keep doing it, get the amount of money I want, and then when I'm done. I'll just walk away, and I'll just they'll just fabricate just a have reason a giant for leave. lump sum because guess, you didn't have to pay for living for like eight to. 20 years right. or that's a good the gig long like you work yeah, maybe all the money you make you're at literally making stockpile it probably feed you too right i guess to some degree they have to but I, I imagine it's a lot more better uh more benefits for people who are quote-unquote on set who are actually physically seen by truman who are, yeah, have yeah. to interact with him if you're behind the scenes i'm assuming that's more of like a nine to five type exactly, of job yeah, yeah. well yeah because like because you're, you're not being seen you can either do maintenance well you can, you can see that too because do makeup the people and all that leave when the moon comes up yep right. it's like only like you said paul giamani and one other guy there at nighttime yeah, yeah. because so he's guess. sleeping so they just put on that one monitor so you guys are familiar with disneyland and how they get the like cast and everything in no i'm not i'm not familiar with disneyland at all what is it yeah where is it actually so, <laughs> wow! That somewhere was, that was like so fast <laughs> retaliation. <laughs> like, <sighs> sorry, John. Maybe it's about in fifty-five miles south east of Los Angeles. Um, so it used to be an agricultural field, but what they ended up doing is sometime in the nineteen fifties, <laughs> they actually built an amusement park that was built around the whole like emerging Disney entertainment like industry and everything, and What's they wanted to do it right off site. From the main like entertainment stuff that was happening north of there, because they wanted to have like around Burbank, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh oh my god! Yeah, so they wanted to have it off site. And anyways, it ended up being an amusement park later on. But I think no, that sounds like sweet. It. We need to go. Some people have gotten tattoos. Do you on think their they're reopening? <laughs> my point is, in asking <laughs> that, are you guys open. familiar with the fact <laughs> of how elaborate it is that they get their 
cast and shit in. Yeah, yeah, yeah it must be and crazy. They have tunnels and they have like a full ecosystem well, underground. Yeah. Yeah. Disney World, the Magic Kingdom, and all that stuff is even more intense because they yeah. built that from the ground up. Comparatively. But, how cool do you think the system is for how the cast gets in and out? Of it's the probably, it's it's probably so just cool. like Disney Florida to where they have all the underground tunnels yeah, and right. systems, Bridges and those shit, trash like, system and all that jazz. Like, I'd want to watch another movie. It's about the background. Like making the too. Truman show. That would be a good they can do like sequel. A nice, they can yeah. do like a nice, even like it can even be a short or just like a little series. Well, a good just, sequel would yeah. be what the hell happens to Truman after he leaves. That, but we're no, that about be, 20 no, years. You can't that know that because be it ruins. It, but it would kind okay, of ruin be good the fan fiction. Ending. It would be a good fan I'm fine fiction. With that. Yeah, but I want to see a movie about Paul Giamatti's character. <laughs> I know, cool. right? right? Specifically, <laughs> like, and I want him to play the lead, and I want him to reprise the role, and. It's bring happen. it back, and we'll bring back Ed Harris's Kristoff, and we'll get for this for editors going. everywhere. How to edit a live show that never stops, right? <laughs> the Saturday Boys. Saturday Boys never stop. Nope. No, it's every day is Saturday. So every day is Saturday. Yeah. You said that. You can say that again. Boom. We're actually trapped in this room. Yeah, yeah we, we never we never actually leave. leave. Yeah, we, we just, just watch everything on this TV going. right here. Yep. Yeah, we just keep going. They do occasionally have to cut away. To like the early episodes that we don't release when we go take a shit and stuff like that. Because yeah. it's our memories, you know. When we yeah. breathe through our assholes. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring it back. I had Die. to bring it back. I this had is not one that back. I'm going to like. No, I'm going to um, love this one. Minus the poop oh, stuff. I had a funny line stuff. here. Uh, so this is from, I forget, uh, the best friend's name. I forget his name. Marlon. Right now. Marlon, yes. He goes, where the hell is Fiji? Near Florida? Yeah, that killed me. I was like, Every no, you couldn't it. be more far off. What are you talking? You went the wrong, like, what? Were you even trying? I know. You, did you even <laughs> try, like, like, I, like, you co- like, I know you copied off all his, his tests and stuff, but I mean, like, you did, have you ever looked at a map or just even thought? Yeah, w- w- like, what? Near Florida. But they're supposed to be in Florida. That's the part I love also. I know, right? I know. It's filmed in Florida. That That's, that's like an in-joke. Right. It's like a, a Guerrero Street, basically. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, oh my god! I think my personal favorite line from the movie: "Good afternoon, good evening, and good night." I mean, that's top tier. In case I don't yeah, see you. In case I don't see you. Used three times in the movie. And the third time is the absolute best. Yeah, I was so surprised good. it was only used three times mm-hmm. because I felt like it's so impactful. Oh, and he only says remember. it twice. I like how everyone reads one magazine, Dog Fancy. Right. I love Dog Fancy. Also, it bothered me. Okay, this is stupid, but it bothered me. The first time you get the perspective. Okay, so assuming I'm the guy behind the stand, Mm -hmm. it's like Dog Fancy grabs it on the left. And then it's not stalking me differently the second day, and then he grabs it from the right. I mean, there's multiple here, but then you just grab, there's one here. I feel like they're all Dog Fancy. They're all Dog Fancy. If you notice, except for one that he has that's separate just for Truman. Really? Yep. And oh. if you notice one of the times, I think the second time he goes there, he says what he knows Truman's looking. Like, it's like for your wife, right? Is. Yeah. Yeah. Think about how much huh. planning you have to do to build a world that's isolated. You have to create the magazines. You have to Truman's job of calling for insurance, which who the hell made Truman an insurance agent? Because that is like. Well, they made oh, it super vague, too. Like, you have to really pay attention everything. and even realize what the hell he did. Because the first yeah. time I watched it, I didn't even know what his job was. Yeah. You ever notice he has a life raft on his desk as one of his desk toys? I didn't. That's something no. I caught on this watch, wow, Yeah, that's a good catch. Oh. He always has to have it with him in case he gets yeah. into water. But I found one of the videos I watched, yeah, too, was the reason why his job's so ambiguous is because he's supposed to be the, the everyman. He's supposed to be just, like, a very, like basic any like normal white american they like set up like every customer he calls and everything like that like it's you know, to create a world of lies is a lot of work right like just like that that's like one of the biggest acting roles that you i think any person would ever have is trying to, to convince someone of that that their world is, is real. real like that's and that's be able to the, keep them through it the pinnacle of acting because like i feel like you can't get more like you ha- having to fake something than that because if you fuck it up their entire world is on the line because yeah, the, the world building is like is, is so un, like so substantial it's more so than anything you can ever do in another movie but it really shows how much they probably tailored it to his experience though because they always have eyes on him so they know what he does and they kind of created this creature of habit so it's like it's is it really real because they manufactured his whole life they manufactured his fears they catered to his like like his stuff but they never brought it in like he wants right. to be an explorer and everything like that, but 
that's just I feel thematically. I think they picked the, him as an explorer. Like the idea that listen, like it's it's not fake, it's controlled. I mean, like I feel like they they try so hard to say that those are two. Like it's not different. It just it just the only difference is the word you're using, but it's they're used synonymously. Like again, it's all perspective, right? Because like you even try to say like you accept what you what you see. Like reality, like what is it? Uh, you, oh, actually, I wrote yeah, it down too. <laughs> Let's yeah. see. We accept the reality of the world in which we are presented. Exactly. And I got a super is reality. Disney Epcot vibe from that. If you know mm-hmm. anything about the old original Epcot project, it's yeah. like, oh, gosh. It's like <laughs> one of my favorite phrases, perception is reality. It's like they try to drive that home with that like phone call between him and Sylvia. But it's but like totally a way to just manipulate the whole context of someone's experiences. Yeah, and Christoph literally said he's like, he could leave at any time. But he, he can't. Dude, right? no, is that why you try to kill him? Yeah, he tries to kill him, but let, like the first time when he has Sylvia in the car, and then they go over the bridge. Okay, that's already prevention number one. Then they go through a forest fire. Prevention you number mean two. Not Sylvia, his wife. His you wife. Mean, yeah. Yeah. Meryl. Yeah. My, Meryl. Yeah, Meryl. Yeah. yeah. And then. Meryl. Meryl. <laughs> and then they get to the nuclear plant. Like, how big is this dome outside of just the town? You know what I mean? Right. I think it's just distorted in a similar way to okay if you go back a couple episodes as the listener and listen to Indy mm-hmm. it's distorted like Indy mm-hmm. I think there's some off-site manipulation they do with like as far as that road it might be optically like curved they use in a certain way oh, yeah. so of course it's not super long area. Yeah. just give them right. more time to react if he decides he wants to mm-hmm. escape Imagineering yeah. is in Burbank do you think that they used Imagineers to build the Truman show 100%. I think they killed them Whoa. <laughs> oh my God. That's not the response Whoa. I expected at all. <laughs> you mean like they made them make it and then they killed them type exactly. thing? Like the, God. Them like quiet. Your use <laughs> is over. Is that <laughs> what happens after God. you quit your uh, contract on the Truman Show? They, they just murk you? money. That's how they stay in business. Oh, my God. Well, they pay them they constantly and then they kill them in the end. They don't let them take their lump sum. That's exactly. the food from the Truman Show. Ladies. And then they use their bodies to biocompost. Wow. It's people. Wrong movie. And they build up. <laughs> and that's what keeps the facility from sinking into the ground from the massive weight. Compost. That would be heavy as hell. That would be very right. Both emotionally and physically. <laughs> right. That's crazy. That's, yep. that's a... Yep. And that's, that's a little bit of yeah. engineering from John. To <laughs> <laughs> that was such like a deep thought that I forgot what I was going to say. Gosh. It's gone. Oh, Thank so you. one thing that fucked me up was when Kristoff at the, this is at the very end when he's talking to Truman and then he's like, everybody's been there for everything. He says, the episode where you lost your first tooth. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I'm like, how fucked up is it that he's literally referring to this part of Truman's life as an episode? episode. Yeah. Like, and if you yeah. think about how it, far this gone is, are you at that point? Well, if you're Kristoff, you've created this world. He has never physically spoken to Truman himself unless mm-hmm. he's done like a cameo type thing I can see that but to our knowledge as the viewer he's yeah. never spoken to Truman before in his entire life his son he's basically never spoken to so his first time and he's still saying the episode of it's just how messed up. he's so disconnected from like reality yeah. which is ironic percent he would have had to have been a sociopath in like an honest oh, psychological yeah. Well, yeah. context yeah well just because the actions like where he's like the whole thing it's like so many like all these people are watching he can't die on like in front of all these people it's like he was born, born in front yeah, of exactly. a live audience it's like, like yeah it's like, like right dude, there at that moment what? you know like he has no like it's literally like for him the show must go on that's that's the only thing that's that important. still would have been murder yeah like 100 percent sure that's still murder or then, even whatever if, like, it's called because well, it, you like un- putting someone unwill- in a wave pool you and willingly let it happen and you're like yeah, yeah. Fuck well it. you're all think of the like because uh, for him to get sued Technically, Truman is his corporation's son, so it's yes, like it has to be trauma adopted. Yeah, right. through the corporation. Is the corporation a board or is it an entity? Well, the guy that. who he plays the old football guy and like all oh, this yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 the, yeah, the actor yeah. he seems to be more of like an higher up who like funds yeah, yeah, all of yeah, this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like I can like see him getting pissed if Truman dies because it's like his well, cause money all, maker yeah, is all gone. So like I can see the him head of the studio. Like, charging but how it's weird is he, we're, he, they're acting like he's more of a property than a person in that time oh, period he so. is to them yeah which is so but, but at the same time once Truman see that he's like bye right. yeah. well at the same time it's funny because like you would think like Kristoff was like willing to do anything for it to keep it going but then like the higher up like the his boss was like stop it 
So it's like, it just goes to show you the, the person who's like, has more to lose with something happening to him or like the show going away, like is the one that had more humility that was willing to be like, you can't kill him. Dress off is the one that went and pressed the button to add the more wind and everything. He's like, I'll do it right? myself. Like he just, yeah, Paul just Giamatti like, said, no, he's like, like he yeah, like finally had like he had enough. He's like, he knows he's going to drown. He's going to let it happen anyway. Like he just doesn't care. It's like, that was mm-hmm. his humanizing moment when he realized like, I've done all this messed up stuff for this job, but I won't go this. I will not be the one to push the button to kill him. Yeah. So it's like, everyone has humility. They, they just have like, their fuse is so much longer, but Kristoff's is non-existent. Like he just Something nothing will stop point, him. If you notice throughout as the movie's going, everyone seems to be really encouraging or in favor of the show. Like they love the experience, mm-hmm. you know, the two old ladies with their pillow. Mm-hmm. When he escapes, everyone that was a fan of the show was super happy for mm-hmm. him. Yeah. It's it's a whole like uh root for the little guy type thing. It's like we love the show, but we want him to be out. Yeah. I, like they're because they're rooting for him. They're actual fans of him, and they they see all the the torment of what's happening because they're watching all this happen. And then on the other side they of the coin, what's the him. last line of the movie? Oh, what <laughs> else is on? Yeah, right. I love that. Dude, that was that was next level. <laughs> <laughs> so quickly, right? To give yeah, up. Give me, give me the TV guy. What else is on? Yeah, it's like, it shows the attention span of human is what we're talking about. Exactly. <laughs> well, when it comes to another human life and their whole psychology becoming a display or like a project. And then for our attention spans, just be like, cool. Right. What's so next? Something yeah, that yeah. was so impactful because it was almost 30 years of your life, like living or like being part of this, like actually in real time and just be able to drop it like on the. Do you think Sylvia finds Truman? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. She probably knew which freaking exit. He was like, <laughs> That's what I was like to think. Yeah. But I mean, it's very reflective of today where everybody's recording and putting say, content this, out and your consciousness is, is strong. This really right could now. only have been made yeah. in the 90s like right. that. Yeah. It was flipped. right at the perfect like point of technology advancing mm-hmm. to where this thought experiment could be done without having to create some type of thing to explain all the technology we have nowadays with the internet and everything like that being yeah, as you widely Truman available. Truman using the internet in that movie? like. They would have had to like kind of keep him in a time bubble in the nineties, kind yeah, of yeah, actually restrict his restrict stuff. And that would have been yeah. totally doable, and that's almost an even creepier thought when you think about his favorite show being "I Love Lucy." Lucy. Yeah, yeah, that is kind of creepy. Just keep it old, keep it. Uh, don't update them. They could update their entire infrastructure on the yeah. back end and everything, but just keep the town just in a mm. kind of bubble. But, you know, mm. it's a, a dome. Dome. Yeah of technology to where they just don't let it advance too much to not mm-hmm. give him enough free will, which is like playing with Sims at that point. So let's right click yeah. him, move him over here. Yeah. Take the ladder out of the pool. <laughs> As someone hey. who plays a lot of Sim City, I like to take care of people though. And it's like if you look at the Truman show, like their whole like, We're playing Sim City, not roller coaster tycoon here. Well yeah, but their whole vibe about it is <laughs> nothing at all about Truman. The like they yeah. don't care about taking care of him. Everything that's there is to increase ratings and money, money flow. Yeah. And yeah, think of um, ratings. We have the highest ratings with a static image. Exactly. Or something yeah. That he said when they're hunt, trying right. to hunt. Yeah, that think was like amazing. Yeah, it's just like that's really all that's on his forefront. Not that Truman might be gone or dead or anything. Right. He like doesn't care. We have the highest ratings right now. Like we've never lost think, him. We never cut broadcast. So it, it's Kristoff is so like in the history books in his brain. He's like, I'm creating history. But, you know right. the art. When they lose him, they send the entire town after him. Arm like an angry I was going to ask about that. What is that arm linking shit? I don't know so, nobody, arm linking so nobody gets by him. They cover literally every ground. He can't sneak by. They cover mm-hmm. everything. Okay, so what well, why f- is he going to run at what them? What the and, like, fuck happens Red when Rover, he gets Red caught? Red Rover sent yeah. Truman like, on over. Well, that was it. That was one of the things. That the, another video I watched was bringing up. It's like, okay, so d- spending all the disbelief of everything ever, that whole search thing, what were they planning on exactly. saying? Yeah, what did we do? do? Yeah. Hi, Truman. Nice to meet we you. We were all would you please, waiting for you. The entire go population we of all the knew town. You were gone somehow. Why did you climb out of the garden? It's only 2.02 a.m. And the right. sun is going to come up because we can't find <laughs> you. Don't eat all those up. physics. Like nothing was like it's, thought. Like that whole thing was like they were so focused on finding him. They didn't. They they were living in the moment. They didn't think about the repercussions of their actions. Adds to the realism, I think, though, because mm. it almost screams unrealistic, but it's also reactionary. Yeah, yeah, no, it is like, oh shit, we've lost him. First yep. time in thirty years. What the f- is the protocol for this? I don't have this in my cast member guidebook. Right. <laughs> you know, freak Let's out. Let's form an angry mom and come at him like he's Shrek. Well, that and the freaking Dalmatian too. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, the Dalmatian. Yeah. Dude, you hear that? Him. I had a weird theory. 
That Dalmatian was trained in the event that Truman goes missing because every morning when Truman he goes to his car, the Dalmatian oh, comes out to yeah, aggressively him. sniff him. That's true. That's actually That's smart. true. And then um, his neighbor, the guy that has the Dalmatian, mm-hmm. or yeah, actually, yeah. no, it's the twins, the nice twins. Oh, Dude, they were. Do you know the story about those two? Find the son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, do you know the story about those two? So those two were actually, they, were, they weren't in the cast. They were actually added on by the director. They were just members of like the crew for the film set in Florida. And the director was just like, wow, these two guys are like really cool. They're twins. They have this real cool. They're really nice people. Let's throw them on a couple scenes and see how it goes. Huh. So they crew, uh, they like ad-libbed all of that stuff in those scenes oh, with wow. Truman where they just like push him up against the wall. That makes What's sense. Because I felt like too? their scenes oh, were like the, the most like rough. Oh, it's yeah. the pushing yeah, exactly. up to the product so placement. Exactly. So you could see looking One of them's the Kaiser chicken or whatever. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. other is something Colonial Homes. But yeah, those two weren't originally in this script. They were just the director added them once he saw them on set. Huh. But you know, that's, that's just, really cool. where's the son of a bitch? Like, yeah, whoa! <laughs> yeah, it's like zero to, like, it's complete 180 on there. do that character. the next time one of you is late to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> where's the son of a bitch? And I'll send a Dalmatian after you. Brandy, you heard it. Let's go. I know. <laughs> I was just trying to get gas. I'm sorry. I was running low. Oh, gosh. Uh, does anybody else have anything they'd like to add about this glorious movie? Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. through the notes let's, one yeah, let's, last let's time peruse these little notes i got real yeah. fast here see my only issue with the way i write notes mm-hmm. is um i write them in the in the moment and i'm thinking that oh i remember what i said so i wrote this uh note that just says george lucas voice i forgot yes. who said it but uh, somebody <laughs> it's must a great have, note uh, must, must, must have talked like george lucas you know <laughs> during it at one point in the movie so i'll have to uh <laughs> Can you pull up the new Movements album cover <laughs> art and the Truman Show collage? Because <laughs> oh. I, I noticed. Are you going to put this up on the video one? I'll put this okay. up on the video. Um, yeah, that the uh, the one with the face. Yeah. So that versus the Truman Show collage. I felt like there was a little mm-hmm. bit of a similarity there. Maybe it's just because I had this record on earlier. So I had seen this photo. Oh, I see. Oh yeah, it's all yeah, compro. Yeah. yeah, uh, that bottom or the the left photo, the one of uh, uh, Sylvia. Oh, yeah, the one yeah, with Sylvia. Yeah, 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 gotcha. yeah. Oh, that yeah, one just, versus the movements cover art. I feel is kind of like a. Yeah, I get you. Okay. I feel yeah, it's like the collage thing. Huh. Clause to create a face. Yeah. It's, it's like you have cool. your uh, video game slider. You've got I A, I B, I you can use it to create your person. Yeah. But <laughs> not sliders, just selectors. If you had sliders, then you could just make the monstrosities that we all make in Oblivion and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And just create the nose and uh I, I don't know why, but I really, really liked that. He was trying to like recreate her face from memory. Oh no, it, it's heartwarming and terrifying at the same time. Because right. mm-hmm. yeah, when it's first like <laughs> until you get the full context, you're like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. But it's just amazing to me, I think, after what it implies maybe twenty years. Not twenty, maybe ten, fifteen years. He still has a perfect visualization right. of what her face looks like. And then they yeah. perfectly uh, capture that by cutting to her, like watching the show. And I like, think subconsciously he held on to that that was the only genuine interaction he had. I that might so. be why he latched on to that like experience. Right. Yeah. Well, especially once he started freaking out, like not or questioning his whole reality. And then that yep. one person's like that had to come like rushing back. Like, oh, my God. Like it wasn't just her. And like, she was watching out. the Truman show and you can see in her apartment. She's yeah. like free Truman. Oh, so she's, yeah, she's part of like the, the rebel. Mm-hmm. I want that pin so bad. Right. Dude. How does it end? How, How, does, it end? How does it end? Uh, she she must have been like kind of. If you were working for like the the say the casting department for yeah, Truman yeah. Show and you're hiring people to be, yeah, she wasn't the, supposed to talk to him. She was supposed to be just on set extra, nearby to fill the town. How did she get close to him so many times? And then how did they let her wear that pin? Because it's like you think the, I feel the Disney, like she would have snuck it in and put okay, it on, put it on when she was there. So she was advocating for his freedom before she was, she was even on there. You yeah. think? Yeah. But that well, then she knows where all the cameras are too. So like, I feel like all of the stuff she could have got away with it. Thousand of them. Well, at least a, a fair amount. Because I mean, like as she was looking around, she knew like knew how to take him away. Like that scene leaving is kind of terrifying. I pointed that out. That is the first time in the movie where the camera kind of breaks the fourth wall, where there is following them like in the library, like, and then it, and and then then it cuts. cuts away, and that's the first time we start getting those kind of like fourth wall breaking camera shots because mm-hmm. up until that we just get a lot of regular shots and then it's some like of the fish, fish islands eye, yeah. it's something cool about the movie is like you don't get a lot of interviews and then there's kind of like a breaking point where you get a lot of the interviews and it adds a lot of the people in the world and there's kind of 
just changes the tone and ramps it up to the climax. It is a pretty cool filmography thing. Mm-hmm. It's adding like different layers. Right. Oh. But uh, one funny thing I saw that I want to bring up is, um, you know, Marlon's a candy restocker mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. In the scene where we're the camera's inside the can- vending machine looking out towards them and Truman's oh, yeah. talking to him and everything. Marlon's there. And he like puts three candy bars. Truman looks away. He like grabs them all back, starts putting them back yes, in. He's like, yes. oh, it's because he's got to restock this thing and it's a fake job. He's probably just chilling this. Oh, crap. He's coming here. Uh, let's, you know, and it's like, oh, crap. I got to stock this um, candy bar machine while but Truman's it, here. But it's like, how, how crazy is that hiring process for those actors? Because they have to hire so many actors and then you have to make sure that they're not going to snitch and be like... There's so many the, NDA forms and all that yeah. stuff. Well, I think that's why so many instances got through. Like, you look at, uh, what's her name? And then you look at the dude that pops out of the present. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I made it on the Truman Show! I'm on the Truman Show, yeah! And then the dude that, like, hang gliders in there or whatever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the hang glider guy, yeah. He's a baller. Oh, yeah. I can't glider again. <laughs> oh no, I did. Did I just forget it? Oh no, damn it! Oh no, went away. Oh no, I thought it's gone. I'm so think? upset. It was a good one. Well, all right. they're all good ones, Anthony. Oh. oh, thanks, man. It was. It was to tag along with what the what was the one we just present guy? No, before that. But Nick's uh, what he was bringing up the uh, vending machine. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh, thank you. Uh, so, because like the idea, they had to like fake their jobs, right? Yeah. So, like when he follows his wife uh, to the oh, hospital, yeah, yeah, oh, she yeah, said, yeah, about the, yeah. they're trying to cover yeah, up scalpel. the whole. They're trying to cover up the whole elevator thing by saying there was a, this whole thing that like dropped so many floors they have to do an amputation. Oh yeah. So then th- th- this is when like Truman's getting full on, like he believes that this is all fake, so he needs to prove it. So he follows his wife to his job because at that point he's probably like, I've never seen her do her job. So then he goes there, tries to rush in, gets stopped. Eventually, he sneaks his way through, and they get in the room. They're aware that he's watching, so then they're actually there to do the surgery. And he's like, "I'm going to do the first incision," but he's like, he, "Not the person." They're they're yeah, act, yeah right. And then like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you see them take the mask off for the anesthesia, and then he goes to actually cut her, and then she freaks out, and they have to like stop her. And it's like that's that, when that, the that's cop comes up. It's a real thing. It's like, oh, you don't want to see this as bad. It's like they act. They were like they so were, committed to the role. Like he went to start cutting into her leg. Yeah. To convince him that this is actually happening. I'm like, that is so effed up. I can't That's even. That's why I have a weird theory that it was more than monetary. I don't think that it was entirely just a uh, willing compensation. I think some of the people were actually like fearful, like in their job. Some, well, yeah, especially because we never get an idea. Cause I feel like the NDA can't, couldn't be too bad because what well, I guess with not Lauren, what's her real name? Sylvia. Like she was able to just be at her ha- home and she was fine. But I guess we don't have a con. Well, I guess with the amount of times so maybe she went to jail and that's her after jail. But like, I, I guess it could be that bad of a thing. Cause we don't have like a lot of the con- conception of times not, not really there until you see like the intro sequence. And then the two times I think that you have the signs in the bar for how many days it's been running. Yeah, yeah. So like the concept of time is not really there except for those scenes. So you really don't know how much time's going by. Yeah. The whole movie takes place over what, like four days or something. Yeah, it's like, a very nothing. short period of time. Yeah. I, I love my notes. I have uh, <laughs> one note here that just says they did not go out for pizza. <laughs> I guess right. he invites her out for pizza and they just immediately go to the beach to start making out. Can you combine your two notes and say they did not go out for pizza in a George Lucas voice? Uh, they, they, uh, they did not go out for pizza. There we go. So I had a I note it. real quick. It, taking it back to the opening of the movie. Um, I just really love that scene where he's drawing in the mirror. Oh, and yeah, they, yeah. they come back to it later where he's the like, astronaut. planet Germania. I I just think that's one of the funniest, like, actual Jim Carrey moments that shines through. Well, I think through. both those scenes, weren't they? They were just completely those improv. improvised. Yeah, they were yeah. totally improvised. The second one, it implies he knew. Yeah. And he was messing with them. Yeah. Because at the end, he says that one's for free. Yeah. Right, and that's the funny thing because like they're so delusional, like watching it. They're like, he knows. And then he starts doing a silly thing. Like, ah, he's just being himself. Oh, no, he knows. So it's like, it's, yeah, he knows. So it's Jim like, Carrey's it's so performance ironic. really comes out from the second half through. I, I wrote oh, yeah. that once the car scene happens and he takes Meryl for the drive, mm-hmm. that's when Jim Carrey like starts acting like Jim Carrey. And it's such yeah. a difference to his first half of the film. And it works. It works it. so well. Old lady on a bike. There's going to be a guy with flowers. And then there's going to be a Beamer with a dented fender. 
Every time. Every time. Right? It's like, how? Oh, it's okay. just a loop. And then the kid's like, oh! It's like that thing. on the first, like, Jim Carrey <laughs> thing. You want to hard got these scars? He's <laughs> <laughs> like, like, how do we go right now? Oh, gosh. Yeah. It's so, t- it, yeah, that scene on, it's just ca- Jim Carrey, just like. Yeah, he went full on. He went full Jim Carrey for this. In a good way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. I feel like he, he needs to do it. It's just, it's just him. Mm hmm. Did we have anything else we wanted to? That's about it for me. That's, that's yeah, all I got. That's the whole kit and caboodle. And that's the whole kit and caboodle. And if whole I don't see it, oh, and I even have a beer afternoon. left. Look at good that. evening. Good night. Good night. Yeah. yeah. The thing I wanted to say is I took the uh, speech that uh, Christoph gives in the beginning of the movie, like during the opening. Mm-hmm. You can change a couple lines. It's relevant to the Saturday Boys. Oh, oh yeah, here, here, here. Okay. Yeah. So we've become bored with watching actors give us phony emotions. We are tired of pyrotechnics and special effects. While the world the Saturday Boys inhabit is in some respects counterfeit, there's nothing fake about the Saturday Boys themselves. No scripts, no cue cards. It isn't always Shakespeare, but it's genuine. Beautiful. I love it. You. you know what? Thank you. I said put my notes away. <laughs> that was good. I actually... No cap. I will. That was really good. <laughs> Let's cheers on that note. <laughs> this peanut butter is so peanut butter. Cheers, Out everybody. Cheers, cheers. Happy Saturday. And if we don't see you, have a good afternoon, a good evening, and a good, good night. night.